Okay, we're now we're now joined by a very special guest. He's going to be he signed his homegrown contract with the union a few months ago, and he's going to be joining them uh, for the first team come January. It's Paxton Aronson. Thanks a lot for joining us, Paxton. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me on. So to start off, Paxton, can you kind of run us through a day in your life in quarantine with when you wake up, when you train, what you're doing for training on a typical day? Uh, yeah. So now that we're kind of in the off season and still quarantine, I'll wake up at around like, I'll get my sleep. So I'll wake up around like 9.30 ish, 10, then I'll eat breakfast. Uh, then I usually go to the fields with my brother since he's off and he's leaving soon for Salzburg. So we just get our touches in it. There's like this local indoor facility that my dad's club like owns. So we go there, get our touches. And then some days I'll go to the union facility and get like a lift in and then once we come back from training I just kind of chill out like play video games spend time with the family for the holidays you know yeah that's good so speaking of lifting you're obviously not the biggest or strongest player uh, and you're obviously still young so you have time to grow is lifting and, and gaining muscle mass something that the union kind of wants you to improve on and, and gain more of uh they not they don't necessarily want me to like bulk up or anything cuz that would kind of like not implement like what I do as like a soccer player like I definitely don't want to bulk up I'm more of like a smaller quicker like acceleration so like what I do there is just a, bu a bunch of like movements like small sharp movements to like work on like acceleration and just like mo mobility work but I'm definitely like gaining like muscle and like all of that yeah, so then outside of that, for more of the tactical side, are they giving you film to watch, kind of just saying, like, just to know what position, like, for you as a player, like, what they expect out of a player from your position? Yeah, well, obviously, like, I've been watching the union, and I can kind of take notes on my brother since he plays the same position. So, but, like, also the cool thing in training, we use this app called Speedio, if like I do a clip in first team training that's like good or bad, they have like an iPad and they'll just pull me aside after the drill and they'll show me like what I did good here, or like the run I could have made better. So they kind of show me on the field. So during the next drill or next game, I can like get it better. And after each training, they record it. So they like tag you and all your touches are on that. So they'll just tell me to go back, watch like a certain minute. Are yeah. you watching your film after every single training session? Yeah. I definitely watch my clips just because I you can learn so much off film. Just you see it from like an aerial view, like where you could have ran into, what space was available, all that. Yeah, it's crazy the technology that's available now. Yeah, it's awesome. It's definitely like <laughs> such a bigger. Uh, did I? Am I losing you? No, uh, your 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 audio is there, but the picture is going out. But you're. Uh, but. Yeah, it's definitely, like, awesome and a big advantage, for sure. It helps so much. Oh, now you're muted and your picture went out. You got me now? All good, yeah. Black, so, black. what does a, a typical training session with you and your brother look like during quarantine? What are you guys working on? Uh, Mostly it's just technical, just because, like, the indoor facility is not as big, but – we just like we always do one v one at the end of every session. It's one one right now, but we do a lot of technical like one touch. We have like mini goals that we do passing. It's just all clean like technical abilities. And then once well, it's like snowing here, so once the outdoor fields are like able to play on, we usually just go and do finishing. And what do one v ones look like for you guys? Are you just doing one v one small sided to goal? Yeah, we have like mini goals, and we just do. 1v1s like smaller confined area just for like footwork and stuff and then also like the defensive side of things so were you training with or no you say you were lifting today right? yeah today onto the annex that's why it took me a while to get home oh yeah no worries so how far how far away do you live from the union training facility honestly like when i was younger i used to go up to like the academy which is based in king of prussia and that was like far i was like hour and 15 every day that was like a travel and then the Union facility, which is in, like, Chester, it's right across the bridge from Jersey. So it's not that bad. I can get there in, like, 40 minutes. It's definitely a better drive. 
You live in Jersey, though, right? Not- yeah, I'm in Medford, New Jersey. It's like South Jersey. Uh-huh. Damn, you must have been happy when the union made the, the training move from YSC over to, to Chester. Yeah, definitely. It helped me in my ride situation. And I just got my license, so I can I don't have to feel bad that my parents have to drive me. But my brother <laughs> drove me. But they, my parents drove me so much when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I did Union Juniors. Um, I was Brendan. I'm a 2000, so I did it with Brendan. Yeah. I think you hopped in once or twice with us. So you, what are you? You're like three or four years younger. I remember you hopped. Yeah, in. I'm a 03, so like yeah, three years okay. younger. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. I remember that was pretty because that was in King of Prussia too. That was pretty far from us too. Like just driving. Yeah. Yeah, King of Prussia was a hike, but it's like a nice location they have around that, like with the mall, and they built like a bunch of like shopping plazas and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But something they don't have in Chester down there. Ton, ton Definitely of not. Traffic though in that area, like if you get yeah, out. there's a ton. Yeah, it gets chaotic. That's like probably like, I hate sitting just sitting in traffic like that. Like I, I know, it's horrible. <laughs> um. So with you joining the first team now, who have obviously like your brothers was on there, but like have any other players reached out to you, kind of like to welcome you onto the team? Yeah, the team's, like, super cool. Like, they're all great guys, and they're welcoming to the youth just because, like, that's what Philadelphia Union have kind of implemented, like, just homegrowns. So they kind of, like, welcome you into open arms, and the team's, like, great. But I've been hanging out with most of, like, the homegrowns, of course, just because they're similar to my age. Yeah. Does anyone else, any other O3s have signed homegrown contracts? Uh, Jack McGlynn, he signed – um like kind of similar to me like around the same time but he's only 03 that signed along with me nice so when so, your official like have you trained with the first team at all yet like when do you officially like be implemented into the team yeah so i trained with them when i got back from germany which was like i left like october 15th and went to train with Werder bremen and then I was supposed to go to Hoffenheim, but Europe went into lockdown and they're still in lockdown. So I came home early just because I didn't really want to get stuck in that. And so I came home early from that. And then I started training with first team all the way up until they lost in playoffs. So, yeah, I got to train with first team until playoffs, until the end of the season, basically. And what was that experience like for you? How did you feel like you you did in that, in that setting? Uh, I thought I played well. It was like... I was obviously a little nervous going into it just because, like, I wanted to make, like, an impact and I wanted to start off on the right foot. But the pace and, like, just everyone being so, like, physical and, like, stronger, you definitely have to, like, learn and adapt quickly. But I thought it was good and it's definitely going to be good next year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, from your short time then, like, uh, previously, like, what is something you think that you need to work on to – have the most success at that level? Uh, probably just picking the ball up in good spots in the final third and finishing, like, every chance I get. Because, like, you see in, like, the bigger games all across the world, like, people get limited chances, and you just need to make the most of, like, each chance. So if you can finish the slim chances you get, that's what kind of separates the goal scorers from the medium non-goal scorers, you know? Definitely. So you mentioned before that the, the union is like very welcoming to, to young players. What do you think is so special about the union Academy that they've been able to bring in young players through their system? Um, I just say like the school and like the whole foundation set up by Richie Graham and just like all of YC Academy. It's like something that's unique and no other club really has it in the entire like country. Just, the residency program, the schooling, the housing, all of that just combines to make like what the Philadelphia Union are all about. And like you see all the homegrowns and the younger players coming up through the academy with success. And I just think like we and like all the other homegrowns can't thank the school and like the housing and just the academy enough because like without the schooling and the housing and like the academy, I don't think we'd be where we were. What when when did you join how long have you been a part of the union organization? Like, what did you, you went to the, 
uh, school there, I imagine, right? Yeah, I transferred to the school my freshman year of high school, but I've been with, like, the actual academy since, like, U8 Union Juniors and then, like, all the way since. So, so then are you graduating high school now or what's the deal? No, nah, I'm still a junior in high school. Oh, so you still, do you still have classes right now? Yeah. Uh, well, we just got on Christmas break, but I had a couple of Zoom classes like three days ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I still with y- I'm sorry. With YC Academy, are you guys, you guys were training outside of the Union Academy with YSC Academy. Is that a separate training team? No, YSC Academy is just like, it's the same thing as Philadelphia Union. They just, like, I guess they named it YSC Academy. But it's literally, like, the training facility is right next door, and it's kind of connected. So in the morning, we'd have a morning session, and then we'd go to school. And then after school, we'd just go up to the complex and have our afternoon training. So they're linked, and, like, they're the same thing. I thought at one point there were some kids that went to YSC, maybe right when it started, there were some yeah. kids YSC that weren't within the academy. Is that yeah, true? there is – uh like a kid you know fc continental like fc delco mm-hmm. yeah a yeah. couple kids from there went to ysc i probably some still do i'm not sure but definitely some still do they hop in the morning trainings with like there's like a certain group of kids that in the morning trainings they hop in with gotcha do so, you live on the campus you your union career next year what do you think from an individual perspective, what would be a successful season for you in 2021? Um, for me, coming in, like, as the younger guy, just trying to get off on the right foot and, like, impressing the coaches and earning all the players' respect and hopefully getting, like, rostered and hopefully getting some minutes. But it just all starts with, like, preseason when we go to Florida, just, like, making that first impression, and then we'll see where we go from there. But definitely – getting some minutes and getting on the roster, of course, is, like, the end goal for me. When's your preseason scheduled to start? Um, well, everyone's supposed to report back January 8th, and then players from out of, I guess, region have to, like, of course, quarantine. But I think we're supposed to start training again, like, January, around mid-January. When does the MLS season start? Uh, I think they're still unsure about it. I think they're yeah. still in talks about it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, look, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I got this Bethlehem Steel FC scarf. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're, from. we're from Bethlehem. And like really? The team I played, like one of the club teams I played for was Bethlehem United, and they gave us these scarves. Have you ever played for Bethlehem Steel? Well, I... Brendan played for Bethlehem Steel. I mean, I guess you could say I played for Bethlehem Steel, but they changed the name to Union 2, wow. but it's still the same thing. But, yeah, I used to go to the Lehigh games to watch Brendan when they played at Lehigh. Yeah. yeah. But everyone, yeah, Steel, Union 2, it's the same thing. They just changed the name this year. Uh-huh. That's funny. Yeah. The people in Bethlehem weren't too happy about that. They like going to the games. Yeah, I know. There's actually a decent crowd that went, too. Yeah. Yeah, because the team has been around for a while, right? Like it's been around. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were in the USL for quite a bit, I think. Yeah. I mean, well, I've seen Ian. He posts some stuff about Bethlehem United or Bethlehem Steel from like the night, like. Yeah, Bethlehem Steel was its own club, I think, like a really, really long time ago, and then I think the Union kind of revived them, but it was like their version of it, I guess. Yeah, probably. I'm not too sure on the backstory. But I know they've been around for, like, a pretty long time. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I just thought – I was curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then – so with the academy, for – actually, I guess for you, the union in general, who do you think is the biggest rival – your biggest rival? Like, whether it was, like, grow, growing up, like, with the academy or just now? Generally? Definitely Red Bull, 100%. Yeah, when we would play them, it would just be, like, a chaotic derby. Like, it was just – they were in the crazy games. But, like, when you were younger, you'd look at the schedule and be like, all right, this is when we play Red Bull. And it was always, like, a must-win and super competitive. So, they're definitely our rivals. Any red cards in your games with them? Uh, Not from me, but, yeah, definitely from some of my teammates. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, those were always – you guys, you two were always probably the best teams in the region. It would always be, be between – I would say. Yeah, yeah. DC United couldn't really compete. No. David, their academy. Yeah, their academy's grown over the last few years, though. They're good. Yeah, they got some good homegrowns on their roster. Yeah, they did. They, they weren't very good this year, this past year, but. Yeah. Yeah, like Paredes. And, uh, yeah, Kevin. Moses. Moses. Yeah. They just signed Jacob Green, I think. Do they have a similar setup to the union where they have like the YS their own version of YSC or no? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I know they don't have like an in person school. I don't know if some of them do oh, online, okay. but I'm not sure. I don't really think they yeah. do. No, no, I'm, I'm remembering like we had Kevin on and he was saying like, oh, his classes are they're just all online, like regard like not because of COVID, but he's COVID, said, yeah, that's just in general. Like it's an online school that all the players end up going. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what some or most MLS academies have with, like, the schooling situations. I think a lot of them do online. I feel like it definitely makes a difference because then your mind is just fully focused on soccer. You're around people, like-minded people who are in the same situation as you. If you go to, like, a public school, it's kind of easy to get distracted, I feel like. But if you're around, like, your teammates all day, then it's a little easier to stay focused. Yeah, for sure. Like, all you think about is soccer, soccer. And it's... Definitely less of a stress reliever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Interesting. So what what would you say are three words to describe your your game? Um I'd say fast, just because like the way I play, like I want to play fast and I'm pretty quick and it's mostly like one two touch. Uh fast. Um, I'd say forward. I try and play as forward as quickly as possible just because, like, that's where, like, goals are scored and that's how you can get assists. So I'm always looking to play forward. And I'd just say aggressive just because the Philadelphia Union, like, they implement the style of play, like, counter press forward. So that's what I've tried implementing in my game. And it's kind of like an aggressive play style. And other than your brother, who's one player that you would say you kind of model your game after um like just any player in the any world player could be as good as it could be the best messy could be the yeah. best could be well growing up when Coutinho was at Liverpool I really really liked him and I would always try and implement my game after him yeah I loved him too I'm yeah old, and so I was kind of heartbroken when he left but same <laughs> got a good paycheck for him though yeah exactly that's all that matters so as as uh you play like center mid like a center attacking mid role do you do you uh which do you kind of prefer to did you prefer more to score goals or to set them up and get assists uh i like setting them up but i don't know i don't think there's anything better than getting a goal nothing can beat that when it goes in the back of the net and everyone celebrates but it's also satisfying when you slip a nice ball in and they finish, but definitely, I think scoring goals. Would you say is more prevalent in your game, assisting or scoring? What do I do more of? I yeah. think I assist, but as the ten role, I mean, assisting and scoring and the ten role, you need to do both. But I think for me, I definitely make more assists. But I'm definitely trying to implement more goals, just because as the ten, you need to do both. Yeah. Yeah. And not yeah, that, that's true. So is that where you're gonna is that where they're gonna be having you play in at the union then when you move in? Yeah, yeah. That'd be where they I think they're gonna have me play. The same role that uh, Brandon played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what the, what's their formation? It was kind of like a four, two, three, one almost, or there was like a diamond in midfield at sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So we usually start off with like the four four two diamond and then second half we make usually a couple changes and then they switch to the four two three one with like That's wingers true. but more centrally. Do you feel like you can play those wider positions in the diamond or do you see yourself better suit for the middle position? Uh I mean, I have no problem playing like one of the eights on the side of the diamond. And like when they switch to the four two three one, like one of the winger positions, I think 
uh, more so one of the winger positions in the four two three one, just because that kind of suits me better. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of mentioned this earlier briefly about traveling to Germany and traveling with some teams. Yeah. How, how long exactly were you there for? Uh, I was there for two and a half weeks because it was Union 2's off season. So I just talked to Philly and they thought and we thought it would be a good idea for me to go get an experience over there with a few clubs just to see and get some training in on like the off season. So, yeah. So but you ended up only it was only one club, right? Yeah, I only went to Verde Bremen. OK. How how was that experience for you then? Like, what 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 was your biggest takeaway from traveling to Germany? Um, I mean, it was like an awesome experience. My biggest takeaway was probably just everyone over there. Like, they're just really smart. They're maybe not the most athletic players, but like the way they see the game and the way they play is just like their IQ is really really high. So it was good playing in that environment. Mm-hmm. Was that your first time playing in in Europe? Uh, no, I've been to like Belgium and Spain. Yeah, when I was younger, just for a couple of tournaments, but that was the first time in Germany at Bremen. Did you find yourself like, did you find yourself then more athletic than the players you're playing with, like quicker and faster? Or, uh, I'd say quicker, uh-huh. but I don't know. Some of them are fast, but like, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Just, so, yeah. go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. I was gonna say some of the differences they they because they probably tactically they're probably just very very well educated and they know what's going. Yeah, on. they're very organized. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest difference then. Yeah. So ideally, obviously, you're yet to play for the Union First team, but five years from now, if you could be playing in one league, what league would that be in? Um. I would say Premier League, but, like, that's obviously my favorite league to watch, but physically and soccer-wise, I don't know if that would best suit me. So I'd probably say La Liga just because the way they play and the soccer they play is, like, really cool to watch. And that's, like, the environment I would want to be in. And that's, like, the soccer I kind of, like, want to play. Yeah. Do you have a favorite club in La Liga? Uh, Barca, yeah. Barca. Just because of Messi. He's my favorite player. So you're a Messi guy over Ronaldo? Yes, 100%. Same here. Don't worry. Any day. Any day. It's not close for me. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, Ronaldo's still a GOAT. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, the stuff he does is amazing. I just think Messi's better. Yeah, he's more gifted. Yeah, for sure. Like, the stuff Messi does is just like, wow. Yeah, no one else can replicate it. Ronaldo's no. more clutch, I would say, but the stuff that Messi, Messi's just a master. Yeah, he's a master with the ball. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So recently, your brother got called in the national team and he scored. What was that experience like for you, seeing him make his like debut and then scoring it as well? That was just wasn't his debut. That was his second appearance, right? Second appearance. Oh. Yeah, that was second. Um, I was just super excited for him just because with the national team, it's kind of been up and down for him, like at the younger ages with me too like we didn't always get called in it was kind of like we'd get called in like every year but then there's some kids that would get called in every camp and it's obviously like frustrating for a youth kid not getting called in just because like we're both competitive and you obviously want to go to every single camp but for him I was just super excited because all the times like he didn't get called into like a younger camp he just continued to work hard and then it finally paid off got his goal yeah. well Weston McKenney I remember I just read something online that he would he wasn't even considered for the U17 World Cup roster and now yeah. he's one male player of the year for the U.S. so yeah it really matter too much it's more of a long-term thing also yeah you have to stay focused on the long term just yeah. like it's yeah like a guy like a guy at Union and my dad told me it's a marathon not a race mm-hmm. so like you don't have to always be in the U15 age group like you just have to stay focused on like the bigger picture, like the first team. Yeah. A lot of the guys we've interviewed have also said that look, the youth national team setup, it can get kind of political, you know, like they, they kind of yeah. share favorites within the system. Yeah. Yeah. 
huge deal. It's all, like you said, it's a marathon, not a race. Yeah. Especially in the moment too. Like, Oh, if you don't, it's like, Oh I don't make this U15 loss or it's like the end of the world, but that's really not the case. Like if you, it's given things like that team doesn't really matter at the end. Of the yeah. Day. Like in, in however many years, nobody's going to really remember, Oh, you were on that U15 team. That's yeah. I kind of learned from my brother. Cause I remember he got so disappointed, like when he didn't get called in and, when I didn't get caught into the youth teams, I was just like, all right, like, we'll see where I am in five years and then we'll gauge from that. So when was your last, uh, I guess, national team call, youth national team call up? Um, I think I was at the, there hasn't been one in forever because yeah. of COVID and stuff, but I want to say it was August, like last, not like the last August, I don't know. August 2019. Yeah, yeah, that one. I went to a camp in Chula Vista there. That was like the last camp, and then there was a trip. But I didn't go to the trip. I just went to the very last camp. Have you been in contact? So wait, what would you be with the U17 national team right now? Are you eligible for that? Or is it the age group below you that's that level? Uh, I think it's U17. Yeah, it's U17. Have you been in contact with any of the, the coaches for that? Yeah, there's been like a couple Zoom meetings just keeping us updated about when the next camp is and just like getting us all together to talk again. But I don't think there's been like a set date for the next one. Yeah, they probably have no idea, huh? <laughs> yeah, they have a lot going on probably. Yeah, I don't think that any, I mean, the U20 World Cup's supposed to be what next summer? And I don't think they've had any camps or anything like that yet. So that's Yeah, same be. with the Olympic team. I don't think they've been called together. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. But I guess I would imagine everybody else is kind of in the same boat too. So yeah, guys, with the rest of the world. Yeah. That'll be interesting because a lot of the guys we, we interview are going to be hopefully making the U-20s or the, the Olympic roster. Olympic team? Yeah, so probably. Nice. I'd say a good amount are, definitely. Yeah, it'll be really cool to see. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. the U-17s can come together soon as well. I don't know. Is there any tournaments for that coming up? Um, I think for my age group that there's no World Cup for my age group. I don't know. I don't know if there's any tournaments coming up. I don't think any. How often do they do the U-17 World Cup? Is that every two years? And it's every – yeah, it's every two years. So my age group misses out on it, but the 04 is – yeah. yeah, I know. It's tough. But we get the – I think my age group gets the U-20 World Cup. But I guess that makes sense then. Yeah. It rotates. So is there anybody who – anybody who you played with, like, on the – whether it be the U.S. Nas youth national team or with the union, like who's a kind of a young player that you think is going to be really good, like this coming, like who's going to have like a breakout year, you think? Um, Other than yourself. Seen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've seen it already with Caden Clark, but uh, I think uh, with national team stuff, I've always been close with Kevin and Moses and I know like what they can do like at DC I think Moses and Kevin are both gonna you've seen little glimpses of it with Kevin this past year he's gotten a lot of first team minutes but I'd say in the next coming year they're gonna be special and like definitely wants to watch I think Moses is really good I think he's got a really high ceiling yeah I no he's games. yeah he's one of the calmest people I've ever met on the ball like he just yeah. avoids pressure so easily definitely it's funny. One of the guys I go to school with, he knew Kevin in high school. He was like two years older than him, I want to say. And he was like, yeah, it was so funny. Like when I was a senior, I think he was a freshman or whatever. And he's like, I had no idea. Like he was that good at soccer. He's like, it was crazy. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Will, what else? You got anything else? Uh, I think that's it for me, unless you have any other final questions. Um, do you have a teammate, like, with the union now that you're really excited to play with? Um, is there any player, like, that sticks out to you that? Yeah, in training, Jamiro Montero, he's, like, he's just really good on the ball, and he's fun to play with. I've seen, like, little glimpses of it. So I'm definitely looking forward to learning from him and playing with him. Nice. Nice. Um, another thing, like obviously, like is your goal one day to play with 
with Brendan, like, on the same team? Um, I think, I mean, eventually, yeah, it'd obviously be cool, like, to play with them, the two brothers, but, like, I'm not going to, like, go out of my way to go to the same team as him, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just think, like, we both have different paths, and he goes on his, and I go on mine, and if somehow we end up meeting at the same team, then, like, yeah, awesome, that'd be cool. Kind of tough because you guys play the same position. You guys will be fighting it out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. And it's like tough because it's the same position. But yeah. Um, you guys probably would have some like next level chemistry there where you guys can just like read each other's mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some telepathic passes and stuff. That's funny. I always, I like playing because I never don't. I have two of your brothers, like, one obviously well. I always like playing with them. And we never – we only played, like, one year, two years on the same team. But Two years, yeah. And then our younger brother is four years younger than me, so I never really got to play with him. I never got to play high school with him or anything. Yeah, it was weird when I came and trained with first team, just, like, training with my brother. Because I haven't, like, played with him since, like, we were younger. Like, in the same setup and same team. Mm -hmm. So it was just – I don't know. It was kind of funny. Yeah. This summer we played – we all played together. We played every every day. Like, we played pick up every single day um just like what like 66 ish yeah and so it was a lot of fun just playing with them yeah i felt like some of the best time like the best games we had when was when the three of us were all on the same team <laughs> <laughs> it's funny yeah. no i think that's it thanks a lot for coming on today pax and we really enjoyed you uh taking our time you're actually our first like i guess repeat guest because <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Before, uh, we had a little technical difficulties there, but yeah, it's um, no problem at all. Pairing guests now, so yeah, yeah you're our first two-time guest. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. I I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, awesome. Well, Thanks a lot. Best of luck, um, 2020, and yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for having me on, guys. Happy holidays. Yeah, you too.